to give you an example, I was in Phoenix not too long ago, and I ran across a flyer from a real estate agent that said, a steak or lobster, you choose, send me a referral, and I'll send you out to dinner somewhere. Well, that is an excellent example of soliciting a referral. You're offering a monetary reward for a referral. You cannot do that. You're telling people you would love to help other people. That's fine, but if you offer a monetary reward for that referral, that's a solicited referral, bird dog or finder's fee, and in any amount, that is not going to work for you. If someone's going to find out about it, tell the division, and if they can produce a document or something that shows that you were soliciting referrals and offering monetary gifts of whatever value, it's going to get you in trouble. Your license allows you to fill out pre-approved forms, as well as some other forms as well. There are only a number of pre-approved forms, and the number isn't really that high. From the Utah Division of Real Estate, you're going to be using a lot of contracts that are not approved by the division, and that's fine too. But the contracts have to be either drafted by an attorney for your firm's use, or they have to be sold or provided by a firm whose business it is to provide those types of forms, like the Utah Association of Realtors. Many of the forms that we use are not state approved, but they've been written and approved by the Utah Association of Realtors. And whether you're a member or not, you can use those forms. You can get them from the Utah Association of Realtors website. Your broker probably has a lot of those forms as well. If you're a member of the multiple listing service, you can get them there as well. But your license is what allows you to fill out these forms. And quite frankly, that's a limited practice of law and it needs to be well thought out. Your course here at Prado Schools has been real exacting and definitive in telling you that if you're going to be customizing paragraph upon paragraph of customized verbiage to express how an individual contract needs to go together, that that needs to be done by an attorney. There are supplemental clauses that you can use that have been approved by the division. And where you need to express something that fits one of those clauses, you must use that clause. But to draft contracts, it's a fine line. So be very careful. Seek the advice of your broker or your branch manager. And many times you might be talking to an attorney to custom draft addendums for you. And that's a really good thing to do. You know, attorneys are inexpensive for pre-litigation. In other words, if you get an attorney to draft something for you, it may only be a couple hundred dollars or less. Many times your broker may have an attorney on retainer and it doesn't cost you anything. Where attorneys become expensive is when they have to go to trial, when they have to do depositions, where they have to do all those other things, and that's real expensive. So for pre-litigation work, you know, I've always used attorneys when you have to express something that's a little bit beyond something that a real estate agent or broker should be drafting. The rules and regulations of the real estate division require real estate licensees to give a copy bearing signatures of all contracts signed by the general public. So whether they're a buyer or a seller and they've signed a contract, they have a right to receive a copy of that contract bearing all the signatures. So you're going to be getting these contracts and maybe transmitting them electronically or transmitting them physically, but they have a right to have a copy of the contract, not a blank one, but one that's filled out and one that has all signatures on it, both theirs, if they're the buyer, and the sellers, or vice versa. They have a right to that. In fact, this is such a stickler with the division that we as practitioners require usually the buyer or seller to sign a receipt that we can prove that we gave them a copy of the contract bearing all signatures. And most brokers require you to get that receipt signed and have that in a file or you're not going to get your commission check. So make sure that everyone gets a copy of all the documents signed and that you have a receipt showing that all the documents have been delivered as well. Okay, a moment ago I was talking about unsolicited referrals and the fact that you can give a monetary gift of a small amount for that unsolicited referral. But you can give gifts or inducements for business to anyone you're doing business with. Now, wait a minute. 
That's a contradiction. No, it's not. A gift or inducement is given to either a buyer or a seller, people that are a party to the transaction. The unsolicited gift rule is given to someone who referred that person to you. So a gift or inducement is saying, hey, list your home with me, and I'll give you this great vacation to Las Vegas, which you paid $500 for or something. That's okay. You can give a a gift or inducement in any amount to a party in the transaction, and that's going to be a buyer or a seller. So buy a home through me and I'll buy you a washer and dryer. Or list a home with me and I'll give you this great gift when it closes. There's lots of ways to do the real estate business. And some brokers are actually out doing rebating. And now if you're going to be doing rebating with buyers where if they buy a house of a certain price category, they get a piece of your commission back, there's no problem with the division from that because that's a gift or inducement for business. But make sure that if that buyer is getting a loan on the property, that it's been clear to the underwriter as well. So uh, you don't want to be okay with the division, but then have a lender come back and say, well, wait a minute, you provided X number of dollars for this buyer, and we didn't know about that, and we consider that loan fraud. You know, it's really not loan fraud if, if you let them know up front and they approved it. They're okay with that. That's fine, which most of them will be. Uh, There might be a couple of cases in government loans, particularly FHAs, where they might have to get some clearance on that. But but underwriting rules change with the winds, and so you're going to have to work closely with your lender partner in order to make sure that what you're doing on rebating gifts and inducements is all right with the underwriters.